I don't know if you can see them now, but I have uh, spotted a bunch of mollies swimming in, in this trough. And I put mollies in the, in the uh, trough to keep mosquitoes down because they don't affect the duckweed. And I, I can't feed, just ad libitum, I can't let my duckweed eating fish just eat it. So I grow it in this trough. And I grow it with mollies to maintain, to keep the mosquito population down. And then I use this trough as a feeding trough to feed the goldfish that I have in here, or tilapia. But I don't, I'm not doing tilapia right now. And I just raise this cap off the weir, and then the duckweed spills over. And what we're, we're doing is, is pretty unique to our bio garden. It's a, in this case, a three-level system with single troughs on top of each other, on top of the tank. And you can do a lot of different things here. You can, you can grow more shade-loving plants in this level, or duckweed, which has a wide range of uh, adaptability to, to full sun or part sun. And an upper level where you can do either deep water or aggregate beds like I'm doing here. Just went through a, a flooding cycle, but these this aggregate soilless media, soilless growing system here is the uh, is sort of like the other is one of two key elements, the key techniques that we utilize. Soilless, deep water, and in this case we're doing something called air layer technique or flood and drain with uh, an air layer being created under the under the, uh, the the shelf that the plants sit on so that the the water level rises and sets and allows the roots to area. But in this case we're doing deep water for duckweed and media beds for the tomato. And the peppers. Lots of lots of uh, Cherry, tomato, uh, cherry tomatoes, um, shishitos, prime sweet peppers, and this hot one over here I'm afraid to eat. Um, tinkle hot hot peppers. So, uh, yeah, so that's what we're doing. Uh, the difference between bioponics, hydroponics, and aquaponics. I've been asked that question. Um, it's uh, you know, some, bioponics is, is, a, is a, an arena of growing in soilless that we're trying to define in a, in a, a, a fashion that uh, is the most sustainable, I think, it could be thought of. And we pioneered this at Bioponica. We feel we've got a pretty um, agreeable concept for what bioponics is. And uh, I'd invite anybody to give us your opinion. Uh, I think this is something extremely important and, and uh, necessary in the movement of uh, soilless farming into something a little more sustainable. It's more sustainable than hydroponics because you don't rely on manufactured fertilizers. It's more sustainable than aquaponics, so you don't mind, man, you're not relying on fish. Uh, it supports fish and it's 100% organic and that, that uh, sort of uh, uh, sort of marries of aquaponics with uh, with bioponics, but it eliminates this dependency on fish. So we raise fish, we feed them, uh, we feed them various things, but we don't raise them for the uh, to maximize the the fertilizer, so we can fertilize our plants. And from these plants, as you can see, we've got a lot of fertility. This is a ten foot stake, and there are dozens and dozens of tomatoes on these vines all the way around. We've got cherry tomatoes, we've got pear tomatoes, we got more cherry, more, more uh, heirloom big boy type tomatoes and so on. So uh, all this is, a, is, a, is I think something that deserves a, a new name and something that cannot just be called organic hydroponics. <coughs> um, because I don't think organic hydroponics uh, quite uh, has 
it all down because you can't you can't just add organic to your hydroponic system and still do inorganic hydroponics. And I don't think there's many techniques out there that are that are sufficiently utilizing purely uh, a uh, organic hydroponic with a soilless bed that gets uh, either deep water or flood and drain and is affordable um, because if you're buying your your liquid fertilizers then you're paying a fortune for them so we uh, have in addition to the, this sort of uh, defining the scope of bioponics we also um, have recognized a, a, a new and an improved way for getting uh, nutrients to the system and that's through extraction uh, of organic biomass into a liquid form and, uh, and so we call that nutricycling and we have our organic biomass that we um, blend for that and you know you can also do it with grasses and food discards we have systems for all of that and that's what we aim to do is we want to show people how to do this we want to make systems available that they can sustainably produce their own organic liquid fertilizers by recycling organic biomass and producing you know 85 up to you know 500 gallon batches of this at a time with a very high parts per million uh, concentration of nitrogen uh, and phosphorus and potassium depending on, on what, what blends are put together and, and when they're needed. So we think this is going to this is going to be a, a game changer for the soilless agriculture, and uh, and for hydroponics growers that are looking to go organic and not spend so much money. And we think that the method of nutricycling and, and creating organic liquid fertilizers is going to be important for the soil growers um, who are spending a lot of effort and labor composting and uh, uh, turning the soil, managing the, the humates in the soil. We're doing it, we're managing it by putting it all into the liquid, including the humans, uh, and the organics that feed the microbes that, that, that facilitate the plant growth. Anyway, that's it. Um, thanks for watching. Check us out. We got some pretty cool projects going up here soon, uh, including a, a, a farming project in Oregon where we're putting together a, an entire uh, sustainable small farm. We call it a boxcar farm. Um, our client may call it something else, but that's what we're doing and it's going to be pretty awesome and so uh, stay tuned check with us subscribe to us and uh, let us know your thoughts thanks for watching